So here's another tutorial that no one asked for and that will certainly melt your computer. But all jokes aside, this is actually a really cool project here for After Effects. So we're gonna be creating randomly generated outline terrain maps that can be used in 3D space uh, just by using several really cool effects. So this is a tutorial I always wanted to create because this is a multi-purpose technique. So for example, you can posit this into like a short film. Your actors are looking at this, you know, 3D outline of terrain. Maybe they're talking about a battle plan. I don't know. Or you could just implement this with your motion graphics, you know, put a title in front of it uh, or just show something really cool. And I think that's ultimately what we are doing in this video. So I'm done rambling. Drop a like if you like this idea. And let's get started. And as always, you can download our project files for free if you want to break down or follow along. So we're starting off with a 1920 by 1080 composition. And the first thing we want to do is obviously create this terrain. So we're going to go to layer new solid. Okay. And the width and height do matter. I'm going to set our width to 6,000 and our height to 5,000. So the size and scope of your terrain is all going to fall on the size of your solids. So if you're going to go way larger than what I'm doing, uh, the more your computer is going to hate you. And if you go smaller than what I'm doing, well, your computer is still going to hate you for attempting this project. But once you have those width and height dimensions there, click OK. So with our black solids selected, we'll go to Effect, Noise and Grain, and we'll add a Fractal Noise. The first thing we'll do is come here to Noise Type, set it to Spline. We'll come here to the Contrast, set that to 500, and the Brightness, we can set this to, say, negative 80. Now we'll open up Transform, and we'll come here to Scale, we'll set this to 500. And then we'll set our complexity to one. Then we'll close this up. We'll go to evolution. We'll all click the stopwatch and we'll do a time asterisk two. So there'll be some animation to this. Uh, and this is going to be the outline of our terrain, right? Even though it doesn't look anything like it yet. Okay. So next what we're going to do is open up the evolution options. We can check on uh, cycle evolution. And here we have random seed. This is going to allow us to variate the terrain automatically. So for example, in my main composition, I have a random seed of 778, but if I change this to say 500 or any other number, and as you see, just by changing a single number, the entire composition changes. So how do we set this up? It's very easy. What we want to do is go to layer, new adjustment layer. We can call this random seed. Then we're going to want to go to expression controls and grab the uh, slider control. And then we'll go back to our original solid here. We'll go to random seed and we'll all click the stopwatch. And then we'll parent this, you know, random seed to the slider. And then we can come here to the slider number and we can change this to whatever number we like. Uh, and by default, you know, here's what we have. So now we're gonna utilize a handful of effects to take this random blob here and turn it into a very nice, well-defined line. So I'll go ahead and explain why we're using these effects and what they do. So with our layer selected, the first effect we'll go to apply is under color correction and it's levels. Now what we want to do with levels is create a hard edge for this. So we'll come here to the input black and we'll set this to 109. And for input white, we'll set this to 110. So it should just be one number apart and we'll get a hard edge here. It's a little bit jagged, but uh, we'll be able to clean that up. So the next thing we want to do is make sure that this layer is going to be transparent, but we have to do it via effects. So we'll come here to effect channel and we're going to grab a shift channels. We'll change the alpha to luminance. So now our layer is transparent and this way we'll be able to uh, employ a background once our graphics are done here. So now that we have this hard edge here, that's all going to be completely generated from the fractal noise. We need to actually create the line. So this really isn't the line. This is still a blob. So what we'll do is come here to effect uh, mat and we're going to grab a simple choker. And we'll come here to the choke mat and we'll set this either to like say negative 24 or uh, maybe negative 25 or somewhere in the middle. And this will create a black line. And this is the actual line that you'll see in the final result. Uh, but now we got to take out the white here. So to take out the white, we're going to apply uh, the keying extract effect. And all we're going to do is come here to the white point and bring this down to say, I know 70 ish. And this should be enough to punch out. Uh, the white. So now we have this line in here. So now the only thing we need to do is be able to control the color line, which is very easy to do. We'll go to effect, generate, and we'll grab fill. And we'll change our color to whatever color you want. We'll just do white. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn off transparency. And now we have this line ready to go. And we just stacked a bunch of effects together uh, to create this. 
Before we move on, as you know, creating motion graphics from scratch is obviously very time consuming and it can be incredibly challenging. That's why we made over 5,000 templates to help you save time and produce awesome work under one subscription. For example, you can preview thousands of templates from any of our packs and click apply. Then you can change the template parameters and then you are done. So if you're looking to get an edge in your business or your career, check out every template we have with our links below. Alrighty, so now it's just a matter of duplicating uh, and getting the scene ready to go. So we'll take our solid layer here, make sure it's a 3D layer, okay, before we duplicate anything. Then now we'll go ahead and take the layer, go to edit, duplicate. So now we should have two layers here. We'll go to the bottom one and we're only gonna change two parameters through every duplicate and it's very simple. We'll hit P on our keyboard for position and we'll change the Z position of the bottom layer by 50 points every time. So it was zero, now we have a Z position of 50. Then we'll come here to the fractal noise layer and we'll come here to brightness and we're gonna change the brightness by negative 30 points up to negative 40 points every single time. So we're at negative 80, we'll set this to negative 50 this time. And with our duplicated layer and our change settings, you know, we're gonna be able to variate this very quickly. <clears throat> so from here on out, I'm actually gonna reduce the resolution of my work. You know, my computer will thank me, but at the end of the day, it's still gonna hate me for doing this type of project. Uh, but it'll make duplicating a lot easier if you just go ahead and reduce the resolution. Uh, and we'll go ahead and we'll continue this method. So we'll take the bottom layer, we'll duplicate it. And once again, we'll change that brightness maybe to negative 20. And then we'll come here to uh, the Z position, set that up by 50 points to 100. And we're gonna create a total of seven, at least seven duplicates for this. So 150 on the Z. Brightness, maybe this time we'll just go to 20. So we'll change it by a total of 40 points. All right, so I've created seven duplicates by changing the Z position by 50 and usually the brightness by negative 30 or 40 for every duplicated layer. All right, so it looks really bad. Where are we going with this? So the entire terrain effects are set up and ready to go. We just gotta make this look 3D. So we have everything in 3D layers. So then all we're gonna do is come here to layer, new camera, and we'll click okay. All right, so now that we have our camera, we can come here to the camera orbit tool. They changed the name of it. I just called it the camera orbit tool. You just hit C on your keyboard to bring it up. And we come here, click, and if we just drag around, we should be able to change the perspective of our scene. Now, we're gonna have to use some of the other camera tools here. So we'll hit C on our keyboard again. Uh, the next tool here is gonna be the X and Y, I like called the X and Y tool, where we can just click around and move it you know, kind of move the camera around the composition via X and Y values. Uh, then we can see one more time and we're gonna get the uh, Dolly uh, Z camera tool here. And this will allow us to perhaps zoom out of our scene so we can see more of our work here. And then by cycling through these tools, we can frame the scene exactly how we would like it to be framed. So the goal here is to be, you know, rotated on the scene enough to where, you know, the background isn't, it just seems like this is going on forever, right? That's why we created these solids to be 6,000 by 5,000. So when we went to this 3D look, we'll be able to easily fill up the composition. So go ahead and just play around with these three camera tools until you have the look that you think is good for you. All right, so I found the angle that works for me. Now, one thing that I don't like about this comp, it looks really sharp, you know? I don't like that. We need to create a depth of field to get the background you know out of focus so what we're gonna do is we'll open up our camera options right here and we're gonna go to depth of field and set it to on and we can come here to the aperture and we can really crank this up I'll set this up to say 330 ish somewhere around that range and that's just gonna knock the background out of focus now you can adjust where the camera is focusing on by adjusting the focus distance so I'm not gonna do too much here, but you can mess around with what part of your composition you really want in focus by adjusting the focus distance. All right, so now in full quality, this is looking really clean and it's not as sharp as it once was. So now we need to add overall camera animation to this scene so we can actually see the 3D you know, landscape that we've created here, outline landscape. So to do this, I like to do camera animations via null object. So we'll go to layer, new, null object, and we're going to parent the camera to the null object. Now you don't have to use null objects to you know, animate your cameras. I find it as a cleaner workflow to do it, and I'm addicted to it, so 
That's why we do it. Make sure the null object is a 3D layer and hit R on keyboard for rotation. And all we're gonna do for Z rotation is all click the stopwatch and we'll do time asterisk four, five, whatever you wanna do. So how the time expression works. So if we go to one second, you'll see that we have time asterisk four. It's gonna change the Z rotation by four degrees every single second. So if you had time asterisk five, it'll be at five degrees at one second and 10 degrees at two seconds. All right, so now that we're done for our scene, you know, we can insert any background we actually want. So I have like a dark gray color here that I can insert underneath my work, which it looks exactly the same, but it's a choice that I decided to go with. You can have a blue background, you know, any color you want. I could be an image, but this is all transparent. And you can obviously throw on your title or a logo or whatever uh, for your scene. Uh, and you also, one thing I did add to my final piece of work uh, is the noise effect as an adjustment layer uh, to really just add a little bit more texture uh, to the out of focus areas of our scene. So you can find the noise effect under uh, noise and grain and it just apply that effect uh, to an adjustment layer on top of everything. So once all said and done, here's the work that we have put together. So now that we're at the end of the video, you might be realizing, wow, this is actually slowing down my computer a lot. And it definitely was heavy on my computer. It took about 40 minutes for my computer to export just six seconds of this. So it's not your computer, it's just because of those solids being so large. Um, so unfortunately there is a downside to the export time. But if you do export this, let me know your render time in the comments below. I'm really curious to see uh, how fast or slower some of your exports are. So hope you enjoyed this video. You can download some of our free After Effects and Premiere Pro packs. Those links are below and always be creative.